Good morning. Welcome to the Congregational Church of Austin. My name is Renee, my pronouns are he, him, his. And we want you to know that no matter where you are, where you've been, or where you're going on your journey with Christ, you are welcome here. No matter your perceived shortcomings, perceived failures, or perceived disappointments, you are welcome here. Since nothing can separate you from the love of Christ, we wholeheartedly want you to know that nothing can separate you from Christ's love, and we practice a radical welcome of the uncomfortable, the different, and especially the excluded. Welcome home to the Congregational Church of Austin. Good morning. As we gather here this morning and light our Christ candle, I invite you to light a Christ candle in your home, wherever you are right now, worshiping with us. And as we light our Christ candle, we remember that Christ told us to lift our light high, not to put it under a bushel, but to let it shine for all to see, because in doing so, we give God glory and we spread the light that is God's Spirit throughout this earth. So let us let our Christ light shine in the places where we are, in all the places that we shall go. friends, this is Miss Amy and I just wanted to drop you guys a short line to check in with how you're doing and uh, see how you're feeling about being kind of trapped at home and hoping that you guys are okay and um, let you know that I miss y'all and um, give you some ideas for some things to do. So. Um, I know that lots of you didn't get to say goodbye to your friends at school or you didn't get to say goodbye to your teachers and it's probably been a long time since you've gotten to play with your friends um, so you might be feeling disappointed or you might be feeling lonely and I just wanted you to know that 
um, those feelings are okay. It's perfectly fine to be sad that you didn't get to have the end of the year party that you were hoping to have, or you didn't get to say goodbye to your friends before you had to stay home. Um, and so I just wanted to offer an idea for something you could do to reach out and connect with some friends. So um, you, with the help of an adult or grown up, um, you could make a short video to send to a friend. And it could be somebody that uh, you went to school with, it could be a teacher, it could be um, a neighbor that you don't get to see anymore. Um, and just with an adult's help, make a video saying hi and that you miss them and let them know what you've been doing and ask them for some tips on things that uh, they've been doing. So maybe they've been doing something really fun that you haven't thought of doing at home. Um, and then you will have kind of like a video pen pal. Um, there is an app that I found called Marco Polo and uh, that's kind of a video app that lets you send videos back and forth very easily. So if an adult um, has that app or wants to download it, it's a good way to uh, connect with friends as well and have like a video pen pal. Um, so I miss you guys and I hope that you're doing well and I hope that you um, have a video pen pal and that you're having fun in the summer even though um, you can't do all the normal summery things, but um, I hope that I get to see you again soon. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. It is the story in which Jesus teaches people how to pray. From Matthew chapter 6. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Joy Pentecost will now share with us her reflection on the kingdom of God coming and her work with Central Texas Interfaith. I'd like to share a flight of ideas. Most of you know I'm a nurse, and I'll tell you a secret about nursing. There's a lot of philosophy in it. Nursing has what we call phenomena of concern, like suffering, despair, anxiety, vulnerability. And since nursing's a practice discipline, our phenomena of concern are inextricably linked to practice. What does a nurse do in attempting to alleviate vulnerability, in addressing suffering? Nursing's covenant with the patient promises that we will respond to human need. That notion that we are morally bound to act in the face of need is deeply rooted in me. Here's the flight. Like you, I've prayed the Lord's Prayer thousands of times, but lately there's a part of it that I'm particularly drawn to. The part when we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For most of my life, I've taken that passage to mean that
that it would be good if God would make his kingdom come on earth. I'd been praying for that to happen. How wonderful it would be when that happens. But then I thought, what if the kingdom of God were to come on earth? What would it be like? And I realized, I don't know. And I realized, I have to know. What I remembered was a Taze hymn called The Kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, and open in us the gates of your kingdom. It struck me that the kingdom of God opens in us, that it starts within us, within me. Now, I pray, the kingdom of God come on earth, that God will help me understand what my part of it is, what my gifts for it are, what I am called to do for God's kingdom to come on earth. A kingdom of justice and peace and joy in experiencing the power of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. My destination is my being a part of the social justice work of Central Texas Interfaith. And I thank God and Whit Bodman as God's instrument in opening in me this gate, this gate of the social justice work that I can be a part of. A gate through which I can be a part of the work of justice and peace, and I can experience the joy of using my gifts for the coming of the kingdom of God on earth. As we gather at this table, of Holy Communion. I hope that you have your bread and your cup ready with you where you are now. As we gather here, let us begin by praying together the version of the Lord's Prayer that we typically pray together on Holy Communion Sunday. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the earth, your heavenly will be done by all created beings, 
Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. As we gather here, we recall that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave a blessing upon that bread and he broke that bread. And he said to his disciples, this bread is my body, broken for you. Take from it and eat it, each one of you. And he took the cup that was at the table and he said, this cup is my blood and it is the cup of the new covenant. Drink from it, each and every one of you. As we gather together with our bread and our cup, we pray that God will bless this bread and this cup, that God will bless your bread and your cup that you have with us, and that God will bless each and every one of us so that we ourselves may be a blessing to every person that we encounter upon this earth. So let us together take from the bread that we have and dip it into the cup that we have and let us together eat from Christ's bread, from Christ's cup and share in holy union with one another and all people on this earth and with God through Jesus Christ. And please join me in giving thanks for this meal. God, who is inseparable from all that lives, whose spirit is the breath of life, we open our hearts to you and pour out our deepest gratitude. From the mystery of your creative spirit comes sun and rain, soil and air, grain and grape, and all that sustains our lives. From the mystery of your life and light come Jesus and his self-giving love, and all who gather together seeking new life with him. We give you thanks for the bread and the juice, for Jesus and one another. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for your continued support for the Congregational Church of Austin.
for your money, for your time, for your energy, for your spirit, for your love. And I'd like to ask you to continue to support the Congregational Church if you are able to do so. You can continue to write a check to our church, or you can use Tithely, and that will continue to support us as we gather for worship, as we enjoy our trio, as we gather on Zoom for fellowship and other types of discussion, and as we continue to support the justice ministries in Austin and throughout this world. Thank you. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life and the gift of new life that we receive through the living Christ. In response, we offer you these gifts and we offer you our very lives. And we pray that they may be transformed into ministry that brings your liberating, healing, reconciling love to your creation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. For today's benediction, I'd like to quote Joy. As a beloved child of God, we are all nurses to a world that needs healing. Go forth as beloved children of God to alleviate vulnerabilities in the world, address the suffering in the world, and lean into the covenant that promises that we respond to human need and then act. As beloved children of God, be loved. Go in peace, bringing the light of Christ with you on your journey. Amen.